Just as a good painter knows their canvases, brushes and paints, someone working in digital video production should have a good understanding of video formats in order to ensure that they've got a coherent workflow and end up with the best digital video image available to them. In this tutorial, we'll cover three of the main video formats that you're likely to use in your video camera. How these formats fit in with broadcasting for TV and the web. How to ensure that your editing software is set up to match your camera settings. And how to export the work across various broadcasting platforms. Let's begin with three of the main video formats that will be available to you with your digital video camera. It's likely that your camera will have a number of different settings that you can choose from. And at first, it can seem very confusing. However, it's probably best to stick to these three, as these are the most well known and heavily used at the moment. The three are 720p, 1080p and 1080i. Let's start with the video format 720p. So what do these numbers and letters actually mean? Well, a video format is defined by three distinct factors. Number one, the frame size. A digital image or frame is made up of scan lines. In the case of 720p, the image that you shoot will be made up of 720 scan lines running vertically down the frame and 1280 scan lines running horizontally across the frame. Number two, the scanning system. In the case of 720p, the P refers to a digital format that has a progressive scanning system. This means that all of the digital scan lines are painted onto the screen at once, often resulting in a smoother and more consistent picture. US TV broadcasts are mostly done at 720p. A progressive scan often requires a greater bandwidth. However, as there are only 720 scan lines, the US TV system can usually cope with this output. Number three, the frame rate. This refers to how many times the digital frame is painted on the screen per second. In the UK, which uses the PAL system, you should set your camera to a frame rate of 25 per second. Whereas, if you're shooting in the US, which uses the NTSC system, you should set your frame rate to 29.97, or 30 frames per second. There are a number of other frame rate settings, however, these are the main ones that you should really need to know for now. It's worth noting that the US broadcasts its TV at 60 frames per second and the UK broadcasts its TV at 50 frames per second. So if you've got a video camera and you are going to be filming for broadcast on television, you might need to change the settings to a frame rate of 50 or 60, depending on your output. After 720p, the other option that you have for your camera and probably the most popular one, is to set it to 1080p. This has 1080 vertical scan lines and 1920 horizontal scan lines, which results in a slightly sharper image than its 720p counterpart. It's a progressive scan, which we've already covered, and also has the same frame rate options as 720p. 1080p is often used for Blu-ray output, iTunes HD and web broadcasting such as iTunes, Netflix, Yahoo, YouTube and Vimeo. Currently in Europe, most TV is still not broadcast in the 1080p format as it requires greater bandwidth. However, it is likely that it will move towards 1080p broadcast at some point in the near future. Which brings us on to 1080i, the preferred video format for broadcast TV in Europe. Now we've already covered what scan lines and frame rates mean, so we won't go over that again. 
Let's concentrate instead on what the I stands for in 1080i. The I stands for an interlaced scanning system. This means that there are still 1080 scan lines painted onto the screen. However, half of them come onto the screen at one point and then immediately afterwards, approximately 1 50th of a second later, the other half of the scan lines appear. It means that European countries can output a slightly sharper image than the US with the same bandwidth. However, the image is often less able to cope with motion and can sometimes result in a jagged image on screen if there are bandwidth problems. The US broadcast standard of 720p might be a slightly less sharp image, but it is able to cope with motion more effectively. It goes without saying, therefore, that the camera setting best suited to sharpness and movement is 1080p. And as I said earlier, it's likely that in the future, European TV broadcast will move wholesale to this format. So let's just recap. You've got three choices that we've covered for your camera. 720p, 1080i and 1080p. But I think it's likely that 720p and 1080p will probably be your main preferred choices. As a footnote, it's worth noting that if you shoot at a frame rate of 25p, you'll get more of a film look to your footage. Whereas, if you want a more HD TV look, you want to set your camera to a frame rate of 50i. The next stage is to make sure that your editing timeline or sequence is set up to correctly match the video format that you've shot in. In Premiere Pro, click on this tab here in the project window and make sure that you've got preview area selected. Then select your video footage, like so, and you should see labelled here the video format that you shot in. In this case, the footage is 1920 by 1080 with a progressive scan and a frame rate of 25. When you then create a new sequence or timeline, you want to make sure that its settings match. Go to File, New, Sequence, and the Sequence setting window will appear. Now, there are often so many settings to choose from that it can get quite confusing. However, the only thing that really matters is making sure that the frame size, scanning system and frame rate match. So in this case, you could click on, say, Digital SLR, 1080p at 25 frames a second. And if you look here, you'll see that you've got a match. In this case, the frame size is 1920 by 1080, the frame rate is 25, and the scanning system is progressive. Seven twenty P, as you can see, is just below. When you create the sequence, you can then check the sequence settings here. and the video footage here, and you'll see that the format matches. If, however, you create sequence settings that don't match the video format, and this warning pops up, make sure you select Change Settings here, and it'll automatically adjust the sequence to match the format of the video you've dragged into it. For a much more detailed guide on exporting, please look for the 15 minute exporting tutorial in this YouTube channel playlist. What we'll cover here though are some of the main basic settings that you want to look at when exporting your video footage. Go to File and Export media and then in the new window that has appeared 
click on the drop down menu for format. QuickTime used to be one of the more popular formats for commercial video use. MPEG2 was popular as well, but increasingly H.264 is becoming a popular format for compressing your video for output on both web and TV systems. If selected, it will compress the footage into an MPEG4 format. The next drop down menu to look at are the custom presets. Premiere Pro has done an excellent job of creating presets for a wide variety of broadcasting systems, as you can see here. If you want to compress the video to a large file format that would be suitable for playback in your TV, you need to choose one of these presets here, as they will retain a larger file size and won't compress the footage quite so much. In this case, my sequence and video footage is 1280 by 720. So I'm going to choose this preset here, HD 720p at 25 frames a second. It's very important then that you have a look at this little section here, which is the estimated file size. This is currently a large file size, and you'll see it reduce when we compress the footage for web out. If you look at the basic video settings here, you can see how the export settings match your footage. In this case, it's a 1280 by 720 frame size, a frame rate of 25, and a progressive scan system. Other than exporting your work to play on your TV, you might also want to export your work, or in all honesty, it's probably more likely that you'll be exporting your work for web based options. And if that's the case, keep the format at 8.264. Go back to the preset drop down menu and select one of the web presets available. I'm going to go for Vimeo HD 720p at 25 frames per second. Having done that, you can now see that the estimated file size has been reduced quite a bit and will be more stable and consistent when streamed from the web. If you want to compress it even further, you need to pay some attention to the bitrate settings here. However, as I said earlier, for a more advanced discussion of these and many other settings, please look for the longer tutorial and exporting from Premiere in this YouTube playlist. Your final step is to go to Output Name, here. This will create a new window. Select a location. You type in the name of your video here, like so, and then hit Save. Please make sure, as always, that you archive your work carefully. When you've done that, you're now ready to press export and the software will then compress the video and export it to the location that you've chosen. Thanks for listening folks, see you in the next tutorial.